Splatoon 3 is finally here. <laughs> And with a new Splatoon game comes a whole new wave of clueless inklings such as yourself, who have just got off the train and arrived in Splatville, looking around and thinking to yourselves, where the f do I even begin? Splatoon 3 is a fantastic, fun, colorful, and chaotic 4v4 third person shooter developed by Nintendo that is fun for kids, teens, and sweaty neckbeard squid sister Stan. Although all of this color and absolute craziness might be quite overwhelming if you just picked up the game for the first time. Hi, I'm Mr. Reap, and by no means am I a pro Splatoon player, but I'm here today to go over some tips and tricks to help you get started in Splatoon 3. If you go on to find any of these tips helpful, make sure to like the video and subscribe. With that all out the way, let's get started. So before you jump into your first match, I would strongly recommend you turn on motion controls. It may feel really gross and weird at first, but as time goes on, you'll soon realize just how much easier it is to flick to your enemies and splat them with motion controls, as well as it just makes moving around in general just way easier. If you just use your sticks, it's going to be really hard to aim at players, as well as the game will just feel incredibly clunky and you're going to be at a very big disadvantage advantage. Trust me when I say this, it will benefit you in the long run, especially if you're using a pro controller connected to a screen or a TV. I seriously struggled with motion controls at first, but even a slow learner like me was able to pick it up eventually. Using a combination of your right stick and your motion controls will allow you to fully optimize your movement capabilities. There are a plethora of weapons in Splatoon 3, and with so many different weapon types, it's hard to decide which weapon is right for you. Some of the best beginner weapons that will give you a good insight and introduction to the different weapon types of Splatoon 3 include the Splattershot Jr., the Splattershot, the Roller, the Dooleys, the Slusha, and if you're really feeling up to it, the Charger Sniper Rifles. Each of these weapon types allow for very different playstyles. Think of the different weapon types as if they are different classes in a class-based shooter game. For example, the Splattershot is good for dealing damage and good for run and gun type players, and is overall a very well-rounded weapon that suits almost all stages and situations. Rollers are perfect for covering the ground with lots of ink. The Dooleys allow you to be an epic gamer movement player. The list goes on and on. Feel free to jump into the test range and try out all of these weapons for yourself to see which weapons tickle your fancy before you purchase them. And whilst you're queued up for a match, practice your aim in the training range as much as you can to get yourself all warmed up and familiar with your weapon of choice. Oh yeah, and of course, the single player story mode also serves as a really excellent place to test out all the different weapon types available in Splatoon 3, as you'll be forced to use all of the weapons in a variety of different situations. Although, if you're really stuck and overwhelmed on what weapons to use, stick to using the Splattershot Jr. or the Splattershot, until you feel pretty comfortable with those weapons before you branch out and explore the many other weapon options. I cannot stress enough how important your movement and positioning are in Splatoon. Being on a tiny map with four enemies hunting you down like absolute maniacs is terrifying. And with so much happening all at once on this tiny little battlefield, it's scary out there. And it's hard to know where you should be so you don't instantly get splattered by four different grenades and special moves. Well, obviously, don't charge straight down the middle of the map alone. You'll stick out like a sore thumb. Charging enemies straight on when they have the obvious advantage usually isn't gonna work out. Instead, make the most of flank routes by getting behind the enemy and make the most of the map's surroundings to take your enemies by surprise. For example, here I am on Hammerhead Bridge. Oh no, there's a ton of enemies blocking the middle of the map with a ton of suction bombs. How the heck can I get them? Using the map's terrain to my advantage, I sneak around them using this little flank route to the left of me. And then, just like that, I take them all out one by one from behind. GG! 
easy. GG easy, knuckleheads. Here's another example in Eel Tail Alley. This map is a ton of fun because you can use this big bridge in the middle of the map to your advantage and catch your enemies by surprise. Okay, so here I am on the top of the bridge, inking the bridge, when I suddenly notice a roller underneath me. He doesn't see me though because I'm above him. I quickly took him by surprise by jumping down next to him and splatting him just like that. Although it's probably better to land behind them and not directly next to them like I did. Look, my point is, once you play the stages enough and learn the best ways of getting around the enemy, use them to your advantage. Keep cool and stay stealthy and hide in your ink and take the enemies by surprise. And if you feel like it, I highly recommend checking out the recon mode. The recon mode is an excellent way to familiarize yourself with the stages, allowing you to roam around the stages alone and learn the best flank routes and high ground areas. In Turf War, the main aim of the game is to cover the stage with as much of your team's colour of ink as possible. Yet, for some reason, I've experienced a number of Turf War matches where players on my team don't prioritise inking the ground and instead prioritise trying to get as many splats as possible. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many splats you get. If the enemy has more of their colour of ink on the ground, your team is going to lose. So, for my fourth tip, you should prioritize inking as much of the ground as possible before heading into the action. When you start the match, begin by inking as much of your team's spawn area as possible. This is not only going to reward you with more points at the end of the match, but this is also going to allow you to charge your special ability really fast. It's a really simple tip, I know, but you'd be surprised over the amount of people I see not inking the ground when that's the main objective of turf. War. Oh, and one more very important thing, please make sure that you're pressing X throughout the match, as this will allow you to view the map. This map will give you heaps of really important information, including your teammates' locations on the map. But more importantly, it will show you the map from a bird's eye view, allowing you to see which areas still need to be inked. Sure, I get it, it's really important to look fresh and stylish on the battlefield, don't get me wrong, but it's also important to have an understanding as to how gear abilities work. I won't go into too much detail here because Merch, located next to the lobby entrance, will explain how ability chunks work much better than I could. To put it simply, when you level up, your gear will get these special abilities attached to them. These abilities are ability chunks and can give you small buffs in turf war battles. So it's important to have abilities that you want and abilities that are useful to you. Talk to Merch for more details, but make sure that you're making the most of ability chunks as they are really important. Okay, so those are all of the tips that I have to share today. With this newfound knowledge, I sincerely hope that you can go off and adventure into the Splatlands with confidence in yourself and have fun splatting it up out there in Turf War. I hope you learned a thing or two from this video. If you have any other tips for beginner players or you just want to have a chat about Splatoon 3, feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to subscribe if you found this video helpful. I hope to see you in the Splatlands and and I also hope to see you in the next video. Peace out guys.